Ona College Radio. Every decision I've ever made in my entire life has been wrong. <laughs> my life is the complete opposite of everything I want it to be. All right, we are back, and well, Big Shot Rob had to leave us, had to go eat lunch. Could you imagine that? Lunch is more lunch. important than sports talk. Sp- sleep, food, it's all overrated when it comes to sports, Ian. We're living, breathing, eating, we're doing the cause. You know what, Joe? You and I are the dedicated to it. We man. are. We are. We sacrifice sleep, we fa- sacrifice food. It's all because we love it so much. Hey, you know what? Wh- whatever you got to do to get into sports... And and to to get as much out of sports as you can. So that's why Joe and I right now are gonna jump over to some college football. Gotta love the college I, football. Th- this is the first time that I'm talking college football on the air, so I, I'm I'm a little excited about this. Oh, Joe. it's great. I I love. It's funny because I don't know. For the first couple weeks, I actually think I've enjoyed the college season more than the NFL season. The, the you know the the college season has had has had such so many great storylines. Oh yeah, and really starting off right at the top with Florida State number one, the defending national champions. The whole thing with Jameis Winston, they're three and zero, ranked number one right now. And uh, one of those wins last week coming against a very good Clemson team in overtime without Jameis Winston. Joe, did that show to you that this team can... Can you know have have success without Winston, or did that show to you that Winston really is a, a, an integral part? Well, obviously he's an integral part of the oh, team, yeah. but just how necessary is Winston for this seminal team? I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, Winston is definitely. I mean, they have such good talent on this team on the defensive side of the ball, special teams. I mean, they have great running backs, great receivers, and Winston is just the cog that makes it all work together. The one thing, though, that I'm still saying, waiting on for Florida State is even when Winston was playing, you really didn't see that hands down win where you're like, this is why Florida State is the number one team in the country. And I just haven't seen that go-to performance yet from Winston or from anybody you got to give them a lot of credit last week with all the distractions everything that happened to be able to pull out the win in that game that was huge but right now Florida State I mean I honestly think anybody in the top five could be number one right now I just haven't seen any team that I've really been like they're the number one team in the country I I completely agree. I think the reason Florida State's there is because they are the, the defending yep. champions. And you've got to keep them there until R- someone knocks them out, e- I think. Exactly. But y- you're absolutely right. They have not had a a dominant go-to performance like, look at this. This is why we are number one. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for that, for, for them to show, you know, we're the defending national champions, and this is why. Yeah. Absolutely. And like I was wait I would have put Oregon as my number one team in the country, but the way they struggled against Washington State last Friday was very alarming. You see now still that defense is still that's that's the main thing I'm worried about. I think Marcus Mariota, you gotta give him a ton of credit. He has really taken his game to another level. I think last year you saw in the big game some like against Stanford, you could still see that he still needed to get over that hump against the big Big boys, but he's done it this year. The plays he made to get them back in the game against Michigan State and to keep them in that game against Washington State when they couldn't get a stop on defense, that was big time for Marcus Mariota. If he keeps it up, I really, really like Oregon's chances. You know, the I, I was watching the, the Oregon-Michigan State game. Great and, game. And the, the, the way that Oregon just pulled away at the end. Yeah was was so impressive and and I remember watching that and thinking to myself this this team is is serious I mean we're, we're talking a, a a top 10 matchup both teams in the top 10 and they just pull away from Michigan State that was really impressive and, and I was looking at, at Oregon then and thinking wow I think this team can can is a serious serious contender for the national championship and I still believe that but the as you said the way they struggled last week against Washington State I mean Washington State is not 
Michigan State. No, they are not. And it's kind of funny. It's kind of like the exact opposite of what we had in the Super Bowl last year where we were all was thinking, is the number one offense going to beat the number one defense? We saw in the NFL the number one defense came away against. But in college, it was the exact opposite. Michigan State arguably, I think they are, but arguably the best def- defensive team in college football. In Oregon, probably the most flashy, explosive offense in college football. And offense beat out uh, defense in that one. Well, you, you know what? I, I think that a team that you got to look for as best defense is Alabama. I do always like Alabama is always bringing just the 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 kids they recruit is just ridiculous. I mean, if you look at the top defensive players in the NFL right now, say of young guys saying they're in their first five years in the NFL. If you look at, you know, the the top 30, I guarantee you that by far the majority of them are from or not maybe not majority, but the the school with the most players there. There's a lot of Alabama Absolutely kids. is is the Alabama Crimson Tide. And uh, you know, you you can always like that defense. And I, I think that that is that's why they pose such a legitimate threat to knocking off Florida State and and being the national champions this year because you you know that with Nick Saban at the helm and and that great defense with with a ton of blue chip prospects, you, you, Alabama is going to contain you. I. And I think you hit the nail on the head. When you have Nick Saban at the helm, you've always got a chance. The one thing I will say about Alabama's defense, though, is last year you started to see, I mean, they, they ha- when they were winning those national titles, those were historically good defenses. And But when you see last year and start of this year, Alabama struggled the last two seasons with up-tempo offenses. So I think when you, you saw it in the bowl last year when they lost to Oklahoma, they're, they are struggling a little bit. They've gotten better so far this year, but still there are things that they need to correct against the up-tempo offenses. So I think a, a matchup like Oregon versus Alabama, that would be great. And I think we will see it against when they play Auburn this year, that's going to be a big test for me to see what this defense can do because that's probably the the highest up-tempo offense they'll face in the SEC this year. And that's always a great game, but just matchup-wise from offense and defense, it's just going to be – there's going to be a lot to analyze there. The, the, I, I cannot wait for that game. The, the, week, the weekend of Thanksgiving – my TV is going to be glued to that oh, yeah. game. I mean, just just going off of that matchup last year, I, it's phenomenal. And I think that, that the winner of that game should pretty much, get, now barring an upset in the SEC championship game, yeah. the winner of that game should have, be a shoo-in for the 14 playoff. And I always give the SEC teams a little leverage. If you lose a game in the SEC, I, I, I'm I'm fine with it. The SEC is just a different breed of football than anyone else. One loss in the SEC is just, I, I, I forgive it. I do. You have well, to. One, 100% agreement here. But going going back to what you were saying with, with Auburn being the the biggest test for Alabama and the most up-tempo offense before Alabama might play Oregon. That's true, but you have to look at the different kinds of styles in offense in Auburn and Oregon. Oh, absolutely. Oregon's more of a, a of an area out, you know, Mariota will throw for 350 yards, whereas or whereas Auburn presents the ground and pound game and the just two entirely different offensive schemes there and really let's say let's say you know Alabama gets torched in one of the games but then shuts the other team down in the other game that that's that's really going to be a testament to see which part of Alabama's defense is the elite part this year Good point. And the thing, like especially last year, Auburn's problem was they were such so one-dimensional running the football. Now, I've liked what I've seen out of Nick Marshall. He's definitely gotten more comfortable in the passing game. Still has a lot of room that he has to get better in, room to improve. But 
he really has, and that that adds such more of a lethal component to that offense because now it's no longer on third down. You know that he's really going to struggle throwing those balls. If it's third and eight, he's going to get a pretty good pass out there. So I like Auburn a lot. Their schedule is brutal, but Al- Auburn, Alabama, as always, is just going to be such great football. You, you know, you said their schedule is brutal. Welcome to the SEC. That's the SEC, folks. That is it. That is the SEC. I mean, every week you're going up against a team that that could be ranked in the top 25. Uh, d- just the SEC is so competitive and brutal. But let's uh, we've we've covered four of the top five. Now let's jump over to the to the remaining top five team, the Oklahoma Sooners. Last year, pulling off the big upset of Alabama in the in one of their in their BCS game last year, I mean Alabama. I mean Oklahoma is a team that a lot of that not many people are looking at, and I'd say by far the team in the top five flying the most under the radar. I agree, and I was a little skeptical on Oklahoma at the beginning of the season, but I've probably been more impressed by them than any other team in the top five so far. I really think Oklahoma out of the top five has the most balance across all three phases. Defensively, offensively, and on special teams, I've seen the most balance across those. You saw in the game against West Virginia last weekend, they did not play their best game, but special teams brought them back in the game, made the plays when they had to. They got stops on defense when they had to. Trevor Knight brought the offense down the field when he had to. And Knight, he can throw the ball. uh, Okay, you know, he's got to get better at that, but he makes plays on his feet. Throws the ball when he needs to. I think Stoops has got a really good thing going there this year with Oklahoma, and they're going to present a challenge to anybody they face. I I think Oklahoma is going to be that team that's that's there all along, and then when you know, let's say if if Alabama or Auburn stumbles somewhere in it during the SEC season, or Oregon or Florida State has that hiccup, I I think that. Oklahoma is going to be that team that's just going to plow along through its season, and then everyone's going to be like, "Wow, how is Oklahoma, you know, there right? Say number one, number two at the end of the year, and it they're just going to take care of their business, as you said. They are so balanced, and really, Oklahoma is going to be the team this year that just plows along, gets their job, gets the job done. But we can't forget that. Baylor is right there, yes. ranked ranked seven in the AP poll, six in the USA Today coaches poll. So really, I mean, you know, it is not going to be an an easy walk in the park for Oklahoma. But I I think that they should take care of Baylor. Baylor, it's too one dimensional with offense, and the look at the Sooners when it comes playoff time. Yep. I agree. I mean, Bryce Petty and Baylor, I like, but you just, I haven't seen them face off against the the, uh, the great competition. Their schedule hasn't been that tough so far. Oklahoma, I've seen what they've done against good programs. I think this Oklahoma team out of the top five probably has the best chance to go undefeated, although every one of these teams could legitimately end up with at least one loss. That's true. I mean, it, the the rest of the season is going to be a, a, a great time, and re- I cannot wait for the playoff. I've been advocating a, a, a playoff in college football for so long. I wrote I wrote a research paper about it when I was a senior in high school. Wow. I said we should abolish the BCS and establish a playoff. So I am very glad that we are finally getting it in college football. Cannot wait for those matchups in January, but before we get there, we've still got a long season ahead of us, and it's going to turn out to be a dandy. Sure is, and uh, it's good. It's great to talk college football, and I love talking college football. You you can't go wrong with a good college football discussion. Never can. You never can. But anyway, we are going to be taking a quick break, and after the break, we're moving from Saturday football on to Sunday football. Very good. I, I guess you've had enough of talking uh, football, European football, so we'll get into the real, real, real tough football. Exactly. We'll be back after this. You're listening to WICR, Iona College Radio. That was Radio. a great segment. 